Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth and peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You will learn the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us. That those who were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the Twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You, brothers, must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the Word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased and a large number of priests made their submission to the faith. The Word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be living stones, making a spiritual house. As scripture says, See how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers, it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am now going to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place that I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip? said Jesus to him, and still you do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father, so how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as if from myself. It is the Father living in me, who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, three very interesting readings that I thought today I'd spend about 10 minutes on each of them. No, only joking. But a brief comment about each of the three readings. In our first reading, we find the calling and ordination of the first deacons of the church. Stephen would become the first martyr. And as we see there, that they, orda they are ordained for service. Deacons in the church, of which I'm a transitional deacon, so a bit of an oddity in a way, not a personal oddity, well that probably depends on who you ask, but a theological one. Deacons are ordained for service, and because of that, have some liturgical rights and responsibilities. It's not the other way around. There is a great uh, symbol, sacramental presence of the church in the community, in the work of deacons. And one of the results of the Second Vatican Council was the re-establishment of the order of permanent deacon, though it should really be called deacon, and the oddity transitional deacons named that way. So our first reading alerts us to that, that the, the order of deacon, the ministry of deacon, goes back to the very beginnings of the church. In our gospel reading we find Thomas, once again Thomas is great, Thomas provides a number of um, ways of understanding the risen Jesus. For example, in our first encounter of Thomas and the risen Jesus, and Thomas says, oh, unless I can put my fingers in your side and touch the wounds, and then later on that happens, we are alerted to the theological reality that Jesus is not a ghost or a miasma. The risen presence is physical, albeit different. And here Thomas once again asks a question that leads to a great theological insight for us. So he says, Master, we do not where you are going. How can we know? Jesus responds with an I am statement in the Greek ego amy, and it reflects or mirrors the great I am statement of, of God to Moses. So whenever we find in the Johannine Gospel, I am, we know we're about to learn something very significant. And so Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. In the Greek, the end that comes after way serves a very particular purpose that mightn't be caught up in English. It focuses us on the two things that come next, truth and life. So it amplifies them. How is Jesus the way? He is the truth and the life. Now what's interesting is that Jesus says, I am the way. Not, I am one of a number of ways. It is clear here, the Christian belief, that Jesus is the full and final revelation of the Father. Jesus is not one of many ways to God, ultimately. The final and full revelation of God is in Jesus. Now that then asks us, how might we relate to our brothers and sisters in humanity, who are people of faith, but not our faith. Well, luckily within the Catholic tradition, we have a, a document called Nostra Aetate from the Second Vatican Council that allows us to engage in dialogue with other faiths and deeply respect the project of faith that they engage in. I commend it to you. In the second reading in verse nine, we find in the letter, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own. The but that we find there, and of his own, is in contrast to earlier verses where we find people who rejected Jesus, the cornerstone, they stumble by disobeying his word. Then the very next bit is but, and of his own. So it amplifies that statement. And really what we should hear is, we are a chosen race, we are a royal priesthood, we are a holy nation, we are a people of his own. In the ritual of baptism, at the second anointing, after baptism, a priest or deacon anoints the person 
uh, with the words um, that they are anointed as priest, prophet, and king. Certainly, the priestly element is picked up in today's reading from the letter to Peter. But what does it mean for us to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation? Well, it asks us, how is it that we bring holiness to the world? That's one of the functions of priesthood. So all of us are part of the ordained priesthood. Oh, sorry, the baptised priesthood. And then there is the ordained ministry. So the, the priesthood of the baptised. How is it that in the world then, we bring holiness to the world in what we do and what we say? I often wondered when catching up with ex-students and saying goodbye, should I end it with God bless? Because that would be bringing holiness to the world. Do we engage in praying grace before meals with our family? That would be bringing holiness to the world. So, the second reading today is a great affirmation of this, but it also calls us to action to make the world whole. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God the Son, the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God, God true God. We God are one from me, unsubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate on the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for those who are experiencing tragedy and loss that they will find the resources for hope, endurance, and joy. For those who are coping with fatally ill or dying family members or friends, that they will find the courage and faith to endure. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are ambitious for wealth and prosperity, that they will balance these goals with moral and spiritual values. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who failed the challenge of a lifetime, that they may discover a new world of surprising opportunities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who possess unused skills or service, that they may be inspired to use their gifts so that both they and others will be blessed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are depressed or in despair, that they will encounter a new light of opportunity and rediscover life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who think they have seen everything that matters, that they will be granted eyes for seeing new worlds of possibility. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, grant that we may continue to hear the beckoning call to follow in the footsteps of your Son. Strengthen us in our weakness and deepen our desire to live as you have taught. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of your Lord. Praise the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with passable joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Brian our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faiths. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend, uh, throughout our country, we celebrate Mother's Day, so uh, we are especially mindful of our mothers. Uh, this day will be celebrated probably very differently uh, than it has been previously. Uh, families who see their mother and celebrate Mother's Day with their mother will unlikely be able to do that this year because of the virus. And also, um, uh, some of our mothers are not with us through death. But of course, that doesn't diminish our love for them and the gratitude that we have to God for their presence in our lives, the fact that they gave us life and uh, most importantly gave us faith and nurtured that faith. So we um, will replace the ordinary solemn blessing with a, a special blessing for mothers. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honour them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.